try this again. What up, y'all? What up? What up? What up, y'all? It's loud. My bad, y'all. Yo, what up? Let a couple of y'all hit the like button as y'all come in. It's five people in here so far. Hit the like button. Clean the screen off a little bit. This is part two of the whole truth live. Um, the story with Bezel. Bezel put up a rebuttal. Shout out to Bezel. Um, y'all see everything. If y'all go to Jay Bezel, the real Jay Bezel page, y'all see everything that I was saying was the truth. I just got the mixtapes mixed up. My bad about that. I forgot you had the certified gangster mixtape. But um, yeah, um, Bezel basically um, fat checked everything I said was the truth. Like when I come here, I tell my truth. I don't, I, I don't, t I tell the whole truth. I don't tell my truth. I don't tell some truth. I tell the truth. So, um, like Bezel said, um, I took him on his first mixtape tour. He had a bunch of mixtapes stacked up in the studio, and every time. Back then, I would drop tapes frequently, or Joel would drop tapes frequently, and I knew how to turn the the, uh, the CDs into cash because back then it was so many mom and pop stores from here. Like he said, we used to go to the city, the city, like ten cities, and sell out. And back then, you can sell a CD wholesale for five to seven dollars. You can sell one CD from ten, fifteen to twenty dollars. So the market for CDs was up. So I just showed them, I was like, yo, come on the road. Didn't charge them nothing for no hotels, didn't charge them nothing for gas, didn't charge them anything, just came on and showed them it was an opportunity for him to make money. You know what I'm saying? And he made some, he definitely made some money. I don't believe in letting materials say, I'm a hustler, I always been a hustler. I get my hustle from my 45th and Broadway, so, um, Um, I learned the hustle from there, you know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Kiani for introducing me to her 45th, Luke out of Taliban. But, yeah, like I took Bezel on his first mixtape tour to make some money, to show him that it's money out here and you got to get your face out here. These are, This ain't the day of the, the streaming. You give your CD to a streaming company and they upload and people get to hear it. Now you got to go actually talk to people. And I've been doing that. I've been independent. I've been putting out mixed CDs and making people sign the, the book to prove that what time they bought it and where they bought it at, stuff like that. I've been on the independent game way before I, like, before I even had, you know, I had my first deal in 1998, but after that didn't work out, I went independent. I was recording my mixtapes on little to nothing equipment and putting them shits out. It was a good enough quality for niggas to, 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 to fuck with the tapes and that shit was bumping through the tri-state area. The first Casa collection, the best of Uncasa. I was putting those tapes out um, with my man Kiani and we would make people sign a book. But now that, 
now that uh, y'all can talk in the chat if y'all want to ask me some things, but um, yeah, like a lot of people forget about what I did for the culture and, and actually help people in this culture. You know what I'm saying? I help people in this culture for for a long time and I never looked for the credit. I asked for the credit. I asked for any money. I just did things for my heart because that's just what you're supposed to do. You got a partner. You got a mixtape and he don't got the outlets or or, 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 or the network to, to, to get his music out there. You take him and you show him and that's what I did for Bezel. And I ain't really even know Bezel at the time. Like I said, it, it was at the beginning stages. Only thing he had out at the time was Certified Gangster. And then, you know, he had a bunch of um, freestyles and songs that he did, like he said, with a bunch of artists. And he put that tape out. And I said, yo, instead of, you you know, instead of them just sitting in the studio collecting dust, come out on the road, I'll show you how to turn after some money. And that's what I definitely did. Um, when Bezel, the reason I said it was a rumor that Bezel leaked the music or had something to do with the music getting leaked is because... Um, I wasn't sure of it myself. So to me, when you're not sure of something, it's definitely a rumor. I didn't, I didn't think um, Bezel would have no militia in tent. Even if the music got leaked, I know it probably had to got leaked by him leaving the music in a car or something like that. But I never blamed, blamed nobody for that. It wasn't, for, it wasn't my music for me to blame, but I definitely didn't think Bezel had anything to do with that. Bessel also said in his post that, um, yeah, that was definitely right. Els told niggas, or certain niggas, they couldn't go on a tour. But the only nigga that wound up not going on a tour was me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get to go on a tour. I don't know what was said to Els or anything like that, but I know at the time I didn't fall out on him, but I know I couldn't go on a tour. And the reason that Els was even had the opportunity to go on a tour because I actually made him do the Chris Brown record. Joels was not going to do running. They brung that shit to him. I was there the day uh, Tina Davis and Chris Brown was in the studio and they brung him that record. Everybody was telling the L's, don't do that record, don't do that record, don't do that record, don't do that record. That shit is, child, that's, that shit is out your league. That's for little kids, like, you know what I'm saying? And I told him, I waited till everybody left that that studio and I told him, I woke him up out of sleep. I said, yo, bro, if you do that record, I swear, you gonna be on TRL, you gonna be on 106 in Park, you gonna get on a tour. This is your breakthrough right here. This is this is what that song was missing is you. This is the missing piece. I guess he got tired of me bugging him and not letting him sleep, so he wound up doing a record. Once he did run it, that song shot off. It was already out because when I was living in Syracuse, I used to hear it all the time. And I used to tell niggas like, yo, this nigga need Jewels on this record. If this nigga can get Jewels, and it's like I talked that shit into fruition. And I got witnesses that'll tell you that before Chris Brown ever met Jewels or Jewels ever met Chris Brown or that record, running record ever was done, I always say, yo, L's will sound perfect on this record. I wound up talking that shit into reality form. And due to him doing the record with Chris Brown, he was able to go on that tour, that up close and personal tour. I wasn't able to go. And um it was it, it was it was it it definitely had me in my feelings because it was like damn for a nigga that actually kind of you know was the reason that you even did the Chris Brown song. I'm not on a tour to experience this shit. But after a while and shit um, I didn't even trip because going on that tour, and I had the money at the, at the time to go on tour because I was still in the streets getting to a bag. So niggas was calling me off the tour. Shout out to Lanizi, a.k.a. he known as Vinny Chase now. He was Jewel's cameraman at the time. And guys that was on a tour with them was calling back home, talking about how they wasn't making no money, how they ain't had no weed, stuff like that. And I was like, yo, damn, y'all on tour. There's money being made. Y'all better find it. It was like, man, niggas was like, man. I was like, so how y'all niggas getting high? Y'all smoking? I, yo, we eat with, at the venue. And this is what was told to me. They was like, yo, um, we eat, we, we wake, 
whatever food that's at the hotel or whatever food that's at the venue, that's how we eat. And we wait till L smoke mad blunts and we take his roaches and we roll those they, his roaches up to get high. That's what I was told. So a few times I would send Vinny Chase, um, I'm wiring, this is when Western Union was lit before Cash App. So I would send him a little few dollars just so, you know, the niggas was good on the road, but I wasn't there to witness it, but this is what I was told. And I damn sure know it was times I sent money um, to Western Unions for the artists that was actually on the tour. So I don't know, but this is what was going on. So um, at the time I was, I didn't I understand why I didn't go on tour or nothing like that, but it was just a lot, it was just a lot of bullshit. It was getting to the, it was getting to the point when me and Bezel started bumping heads and you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not going to even bring up no old times, but it was rumors and stuff going around. But it didn't even matter to me, you know what I'm saying? Because it was definitely a time where it was favoritism going on and stuff like that. But you can't trip because you got to understand when new when new people come around or new blood come around, you know, it ain't that a nigga dissing you. you it's, it's just that, you know, when a nigga showing a nigga love, they come with open arms, so... You might be the nigga that was the, the 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 nigga that everybody fucked with at the time, but when new people come around, you know it, you know you get put in a position where you're not the favorite no more. And I had to go through that through a bunch of times. Like I said, Purple City, far as artistry, I had a lot to do with that because at the beginning it was only me and Shice, and at my man David Bright studio, like recording joints, putting these tapes together all night, sitting up there for two days, smoking mad haze, just putting tapes together. So I know the work to be put in. And like, I'm glad Bezel said it, like, nigga, I, I was taking niggas out on the road, showing them a whole different perspective of the music business, making sure niggas make bread and not ask for nothing. It takes a, it takes a different type of person to see money being me and that doesn't entice them to have no type of ill feelings because that's what I brought them out there to do was to make money. Ask Bezel than anybody else, give them an opportunity to go on the road and, and make money like that. You know what I'm saying? Ask them. This was at my early stages too. This is when we had all the Purple City shit out. So it was just like, yo, come on the road with us. Come get this money. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, um, even with the Chuck Wilson situation, Chuck Wilson was a, 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 a conniving nigga. All he wanted was um, to be able to uh, be connected to some dipset shit. He ain't give a fuck who it was. If they were, if niggas was willing to sign a contract with him, he would, he would tell you anything. When Purple City initially signed to Chuck Wilson, we was supposed to have a video game, a, a, a movie, all types of. Shit they promised us that never came out. It was just that we were so close to Dipset and we was on fire that he just had to have a piece of, of the, the, the Dipset franchise some type of way. Because Cam damn sure wasn't fucking with him like that. Like I said, everybody that did independent deals, they piggyback off us because niggas did not know about the, the independent game. Niggas did not know Chris Landry. Niggas didn't know nobody. Niggas was in, that whole game was introduced through AG. AG had the AG was the pipeline to that shit. And then once niggas got introduced, niggas ran off and did their they own thing with niggas. You know what I'm saying? And niggas didn't get uh, no residuals from none of those alley oops or nothing. So nobody can say niggas ain't alley oop them or teach them or show them the game. Way before Jim Jones was independent, Purple City was independent doing this shit. I was independent damn near half my career selling my music. Half my music that I'm legendary for, niggas actually bought from me on Hump 45th. And then I start, like when that piff and all that um, live mixtape came on, and I start dropping my mixtapes on those servers. Those servers is not even around like that no more. So it's just like, niggas was uh, doing, doing this independent thing before it was cool. To, to say you was independent because everybody was chasing the major. Everybody was chasing the advance. Everybody was chasing the check. 
I was never chasing no fucking deal, no check, because I was making hand over fist money. I was making $20 per CD. What artists back in 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 was getting $20, $15. If a nigga just love you, might give you $100 for your tape. Who was getting that? And I was selling thousands and thousands of CDs every day. So niggas wasn't making that type of money. I was making more money than rappers that had deals because I was saying 100% of my money. Like, niggas can't front on me. Niggas can't front. I gave niggas opportunities. Niggas made money with me. I showed niggas my secrets. I, I dropped jewels. I gave niggas my jewels. I, I never was selfish with the game. And I, and I was always a nigga. The game need to be told not to be sold because who the fuck are you selling it to if you can't, if the people that, that need the game can't afford it? That's for gatekeepers. That's a gatekeeper. The game is to be uh, sold, not to be told. Those is the motherfuckers that's going to keep you hungry and keep you away from the knowledge and the information. And I'm going to always share my information with niggas. Niggas don't share no information with me. Niggas get around me. And, 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 and get clout and get around me and get information and, and get resources and then after they they done what they they feel like they don't need me no more they stop fucking with me like I, I did something to them never did nothing to none of these niggas so don't let no nigga tell you no all I ever did all, I, any time I came was around niggas I brought something to the table so every time a, a nigga get mad at me he bring up talking about oh you was dipset this you was dipset uh, water boy and all this crazy type of shit. I was like, when, when? I always had my own money. I always had my own groove. Dipset wouldn't have fucked with me if I was some poop hut ass nigga. Niggas wouldn't have fucked with me from the jump. I wouldn't have been able to get the opportunity to do the diplomat intro if I was a whack nigga. I was a nigga out kicking ass. Wasn't no like, now I ain't gonna be humble on this one. Niggas couldn't fuck with me, period. Nobody couldn't fuck with me. I was a top dog out in Harlem running around killing niggas from Killing niggas from Midwest, New York, anywhere I lived, anywhere I moved, niggas was getting that fuck, getting the fucking business. That's how I met Lupe. Lupe got the business when he when when we battled over the phone. We got the business like, and I ain't gonna say he lost, but he made him have a mutual respect because we get busy. Lyricists, niggas like Stack Bundle get God bless Fred the God like the the best of the the best of the best niggas who come from 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 my lineage. JR, all these all these young spitters that used to come from, they come from my lineage. Y'all niggas wasn't niggas wasn't around us. A lot of niggas that were talking that talking, a lot of y'all niggas wasn't going to block the block battling niggas, putting out tapes. And damn sure not putting out tapes y'all so we I'm not waiting for nobody. Even if I have to record on a, a pair of earphones onto a recording system, some type of way a tape was getting out. You can go back. Go with I'm 45th, ask niggas how many tapes I'm put out before he got popping. Before I did the Diplomat intro, I've been doing music. I've been putting out music. Been doing this. Niggas wasn't doing this shit. Ask Hellrell. Ask JR. I got video of them saying that on, on No Jumper. I got Jewel's saying audio saying that, yeah, un is the reason I did the Chris Brown song. So why the fuck I didn't go on tour? That's at least a nigga owe a nigga. And I never said a nigga owe me in life, but for a nigga giving you an alley oop to, to opening your eyes for to put you on a hit record to, 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 to for you cause you didn't see you didn't see the blessing within it. I seen a blessing for my brother. And I didn't trip about that shit when I didn't go on to I was just like, hey, this is how it happens. This is how this is how things happen. But I never got on no type of uh, platform and diss niggas. I'm appreciative for everything niggas did for me. But like Bezu said, when like I did a I, I, I did a lot of shit for niggas. I never asked for nothing, and I owe and niggas owe me way more respect than what niggas give me for the shit that I set forth in this culture. I helped a lot of niggas when when niggas was around niggas and couldn't get a dollar. I was the nigga that was opening up opportunities and giving niggas motherfucking game and giving niggas resources to make money. Why have them fucking CDs sitting in the in the in the studio when those shits all I see is money. I see a box of CDs, all I see is a box of money. Cause I'm a fucking hustler and I get to it. And I never needed no no nigga to invest in me about nothing. Cause I always had my own jewelry. I wasn't 
a, a, a nigga that was uh, fascinated to buy mad cars or none of, the, none of that. Me and my niggas was buying cars early on, early, late 90s, mid 90s, shit like that, just to get around. I never was a driver like that. I talk about the ill cars, but I was never a driver like that. I can drive, but I always just like to get drove, or, you know, you know, play the passenger, just, you know, shotgun, smoke, get high. That was my thing. But if my nigga wanted cars, nigga had cars, I was getting cars for my birthday and letting my man that had license drive them shits. My man Skibo bought me a BMW for my, what, 30, 32nd birthday, some shit like that, silver, um... I forgot what series it was. I think it was a five series or some shit like that. But just to show niggas I don't care. Like, I always been that humble nigga. Always was a nigga that helped niggas um, prosper. So I don't know why niggas be giving me they ass to kiss like I ain't that nigga. But it's all good. Niggas won't get my help no more. If you look at it, niggas wasn't putting me on they tapes like that. I was putting niggas on my tapes. I was putting niggas on Purple City tapes. Niggas wasn't putting me on Dipset volumes and all that. I might be on one, two of those. Niggas wasn't putting me on tapes. I was making my own tapes. Actually, Shice was the go-to man when he first started to learn how to put tapes together. I was... The nigga that was like, put this, it's an order. Shice a marketing genius with the covers and all that. Niggas wasn't doing the pull-out covers like the real albums. We was doing that shit. That's why we was able to charge $20 for a CD. $7, $10 to $12, $13, $14, whatever the fuck we want to sell wholesale and move boxes. Like, I'm a nigga that you know, like Buffalo, Rochester, Niagara Falls, uh, Virginia, Ask them niggas, ask all them and ask niggas in Doris Records and all that was I coming to drop my own CDs off. Like me. Niggas wasn't doing that shit. Yeah. So. So like I said. Everything Bezel said in his in, in his um Instagram video is right. You let niggas know. And and I'm, I appreciate you for that. Now, um making people think I was a liar or nothing like that. Everything I said was the truth. I tell the truth. Like that nigga is a piece of shit. Cause that was that nigga uh Chuck Wilson a piece of shit because he told y'all that shit to well well niggas and Chuck Wilson didn't even have no staff. Chuck Wilson probably had like two, three people. I forgot the white guy that used to work for him that always wore the dad hat and Ruddy Rock. He had a very small fucking staff. Like, they office was small as shit. They was a little late. I think they ain't have $900,000 to give nobody. Only person he would have gave that to was if Jewels would have did an album with him. Or, like him a piece of jewels some type of way he would have found not a hundred thousand that man wasn't getting he was he didn't give you a hundred thousand like he was giving jay on them hundred k and shit like that you know what i'm saying because niggas know you can't you gotta have to step correct to anybody that was affiliated with dipset so he didn't get that but nigga giving you a nine hundred thousand dollar budget that would have never you would have been so mad at that you signed papers with that nigga i think it was hardly wanted to shoot fucking videos I can shoot up. I can. I can sit here and and and, and say how wild shit get, got done foul on other niggas' behalf towards me, but I wouldn't do that. Niggas are sitting in their karma. That's why I just be looking at niggas like niggas forget. Niggas forget when you throwing them alley oops. Niggas forget when they won them championship games with you. When you was the nigga giving them them assists. And them freaky passes, niggas forget about those. Because 
niggas just they want every nigga be wanting to triumph to themselves. I've never been that nigga. I've never been a nigga to to see something be great and not polish it. You know what I'm saying? If it's a, if I, if I see a gold something golden, I'm gonna polish it and shine it up and make sure it's right. Like I asked Bezel, I ain't have to take him out on more. I could let him sit in the studio. His mixtapes collect dust, but no, you don't do that. You show a nigga, yo, 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 I'ma show you, I'ma, so you can do it on your own. Just get up with a couple of your niggas, make sure y'all got a sturdy video, uh, uh, vehicle, and I give you, give you the, 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 the drop list to the stores. I have stores from here to Idaho, nigga, over four, five hundred different stores. That people knew me personally because I used to call up, yo, this is Uncastle from the dip set. Such and such, I got a new mixtape dropping. I'm going to be headed your way. Do you think you um, want to um, get into these copies? Of course, I'll take a whole box of And then that's how it started. I've been doing that shit because I had to connect. I have resources in Dep Jam. They would give me the store list, the list to the store. Shout out to Ann Lava. He would give it me and Kamisi and... Um, Ramsey, I'm shouting out people that don't get no props from Rockefeller. Shout out to Kamisi, shout out to Ramsey, shout out to Ant Lapa, shout out to niggas that was really making shit happen. I'm still in touch with Emmanuel. Shout out to those people that was giving me the, giving me the information that I needed to, to prosper in the music business when niggas was shitting on me. So I was able to, 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 to master the black market, where to go, how much I can charge. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So I wasn't starving. It was just that I wasn't making no money from the industry. You know what I'm saying? I never made no 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 music money from the industry. Checks I got, I deserve, and I work my ass off. And like a lot of niggas ain't give me my just due, but I never complain about that because I already I already know. In this music business, you gotta do for self. You can't wait for nobody to do it, and you gotta invest your time and your money in yourself. Whatever you put in this game, you will get out of it. If you don't put in, you. Put a bologna sandwich in this shit, this is what you're going to get out. You put a full name in your own, that's what you're going to get out. Whatever time you put in this game, that's what you're going to get out. You get what you negotiate, you don't get, agree. You get what you deserve. Never none of the time. And know that. That's why I be trying to teach these artists. Don't be out here blowing your money on this, all this, and all that, because all that shit depreciate. Because you know why? Because he's going to continue to design new and new shit, and you're going to want it, and they're going to have all your money, and nigga be broke with a bunch of designer shit in the closet. I ain't seen it. So y'all niggas invest y'all money wisely because there's going to be a time where y'all might not even want to rap no more. Or it might be a turnover. You might have a new passion that you you fall upon. You know, invest, you know what I'm saying? Invest in real estate, invest in art, and, and, and create companies, create outlets. Do your research. See things that you can open up a lane for. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas ain't going to tell you that because niggas is fucked up out here and niggas don't want to see. Niggas want to see you do good but not better than them. And this is the type of shit you got to um, understand about people. Niggas don't want to see you doing good. Yeah, hustlers always going to find a way. Like me, I'm going to always find a way. I always tell my niggas, I'll be making blessings with crumbs. So imagine if I really had the, 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 the financial backing to really get to where I need to be. I survive and I make miracles with fucking crumbs off the table. And the reason, one of the reasons a nigga be get, sometimes get stagnated is because the people I surround myself with, I'm always, I always surround myself with people that use me and I think I'm helping them. And I actually do be helping them, and once they use me, they get the fuck away from me like I did some to them, and all I did was share my resources and my games with them. So now it's going to be real hard to get next to me on some shit to even learn anything. Like, my real ones, they going to continuously get information and drop these jewels on you, on them, but I'm going to stay the fuck away from niggas, you know what I'm saying? Because niggas don't be right. Niggas, 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 always, niggas always find a way to... to, to to, to get you out of the equation and you gotta watch them type of niggas. These niggas be funny style, girly type dudes, but watch this industry shit. This shit ain't what it's cracked up to be. But I'm glad Bezel set the record straight. Glad everybody know what I was saying was dead on. Um on besides a few um mix ups with the mixtape and all that. And um 
and I definitely remember him. Uh, remember his his peoples coming up from Philly, cause I remember how he looked because he had the um, red hair with the freckles and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I don't lie. Like I just go to show you that I don't lie about shit. Like I don't have to lie about. I don't have to get on no platform to chase no clout. Niggas get up here lying, giving misinformation, doing sucker shit to get ratings, to get views. I don't do that. When you come to Uncasa Channel, you gonna get pure truth. Cause there's no reason to lie. And I tell niggas, if you don't want to get, if you don't want the truth to be told, stop doing bullshit. If you don't want the truth to be told, stop doing bullshit. Cause whoever's in the dark will come to the light. And know that whatever's done in the dark will come to the light. So when niggas be thinking they sneaky and doing little sucker shit, it always gonna come to the light. It's never going to not come to the light. It's always going to come to the light when niggas do shit because they think they doing shit in the dark and niggas calm and we're gone. I'm a Gemini. I'm a firm. My astrology sign is a firm believer in karma. I believe in karma. I believe whatever you put out in the world, you will get back. And people, I'm telling you, karma will spin a block on your ass. Yeah, I mean, I've dated many females in the industry. Karen Civil wasn't the only one I dated. I've dated a couple of females. That was just the one that was broadcast. And that relationship didn't have a chance because it was too many motherfuckers that didn't want to see me with Karen. You know, too many people that didn't want to see her with me. They thought, you know what I'm saying? And I, like, I, I don't have nothing bad about to say about Karen Civil, because whatever we went through personally, that's our business, and I would never add that out to the people. She's a, she's blessed. She, I'm proud of what she's done in this music industry, and that's all I got to say. All that other, like, all that other shit she had with other people, I don't have nothing to do with that. And like I said, um, I got nothing but love for Karen. And that's not the only female in the industry out there. I've been many. Um, dated many, I just don't broadcast this shit. I was never that type of dude. You know what I'm saying? I never did shit as a trophy or for a badge of honor. I don't do shit like that. I just do me. It's a difference when you doing shit for TV and you doing you. I'm a nigga that's known to do him. I don't do shit. I'm not materialistic. Niggas be like, yo, you always fly. You always put it together. You always get fresh. This, that, and third. I do that just to stay together. He... It's about self-care. It ain't about impressing you niggas. I don't give a fuck about you niggas or you females. I can give a fuck about impressing anybody. The person that I would like to impress is the person that I look in the reflection of the mirror of me. I got to make me happy before I make any of you motherfuckers happy. I got to make me happy. You know what I'm saying? And you, 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 like... And that's what it's about. It's about self-love and self-care. And fuck all the sucker shit. Because none of that shit even means nothing. been through as much shit as when you've been through as much as I've been through you don't even trip no more it's expected I'm used to disappointment it's expected when niggas do the opposite niggas do something great that's when I enjoy it but when niggas do this that the the expected you just gotta be like you knew he was a fuck nigga there's a lot of fuck niggas out here a lot of niggas just do and you got to stop letting niggas return in your life after they do fuck shit the first time. Because they, they, they going to always do it. Because niggas should just be bitch niggas. That's all niggas do is backbite niggas. That's why niggas be always dependent on another man's land or another nigga's wave to survive. And the niggas don't be knowing. They, don't, they be used niggas be clowns. That's why I tell niggas to get the fuck away from me. Because I'm quick to punch a nigga in the fucking face. Like, for real. But I ain't gonna even play with, I ain't gonna, nowadays, I'm not even playing with niggas, period. I'm not playing with you niggas. I'll stay the far away from you, like a female a day, female I was fucking with. 
bipolar energy, disrespectful, gonna hit me today. Uh, I love you, but even if we can't be together, you don't gotta love me. Lose my fucking number. Like, it ain't no, ain't no doubling back. Fuck out of here. Ain't no doubling back. Ain't no doubling back. Ain't no even no need for no the going back and forth on no text. Fuck out of here. There's too many women out here to be dwelling on your punk ass. Like you, you get the fuck out of here with that energy. Like you gotta sometimes you gotta you men you gotta show women and women too. You gotta be stern. You can't let people step on your heart and step on your feelings and treat you any type of way and think. When they when when they when 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 they feel they wanna fuck with you, they fuck with you. It's either a pure uh it is either a reciprocated relationship or there's no relationship. It's either a reciprocated friendship or no friendship. Stop fucking with people that don't really fuck with you. Cause all it do is all that does is build stress up in the body that can fucking internally kill you. Stay the fuck away from these motherfucking um, blessing blockers, stay the fuck away from these people that don't mean you no good, stay the fuck away from these blood sucking leeches, stay the fuck away, and it's easy to detect, just watch, and maybe because I'm a Gemini, I'm so observant, but just watch motherfuckers around you, watch what they, watch what they, they conversations, what they say in detail, niggas find slick ways and funny ways to say slick shit, always, anytime you catch it, G-check that shit. Stop letting niggas do sucker shit to you just because they cause they family or they friends. Cause family will treat you worse than a friend and a friend. What friends like these niggas is nowadays, who the fuck needs enemies? These niggas be the frenemies. These niggas be the niggas you gotta watch. It's the niggas that's around you every day. They don't be the enemies cause them niggas can't get near you. Real enemy, he can't get near you cause you already know he an enemy. So you're not letting them in your circumference. It's the art of war. It be the niggas that's right next to you. Right next to you. All movies, all books, everything. Life shows you that it's always the niggas right next to you. That's why I don't be next to niggas. When you see me in the street, I'll be by my fucking self. These niggas be suckers. Gummy, what up? Shout out to Gummy. Niggas be suckers. But a nigga can't never say when they was around un, I didn't give them opportunity to make money. Cause if I if I seen an opportunity for myself, I also seen an opportunity for you. And I wasn't gonna let you miss the opportunity. I'm gonna give you that alley that alley you without you asking. Just be aware for the past. When I throw up when it's body language, read my body language, cause I'm a I'ma throw you a oop and we gonna score with it. Niggas don't want to see you score. I love to see niggas come from nothing and win. I love to see a nigga that was fucked up catch they break and then they they live the most beautiful lives. They beautiful homes, beautiful women, just beautiful lives. And I love to see that shit. I, I've never been a hater because I always, I, I, a nigga, I'm the type of nigga to be so happy when I see a nigga win. That's why probably I've had so much triumph in my life. I didn't like I I didn't get super wealthy or nothing, but I have some, I have some good achievements in my life that I'm very proud of, and that's what I go off, man. I don't go off about what the next man doing or what the next man got. It's motivational, you know what I'm saying. I just be trying to figure out how hard you got to work to get to that place. You know what I'm saying. That's all you have to do is figure out how hard you have to work to get to that place. I don't have to have the same house. I might, I might can afford a better house if I put in a little bit more work than you. So let me find out what type of work you put in there so I can put in extra work just to, so I can, you know, be leveraged. And it's not to be better than you, it's just to learn. Anything you learn from, you're supposed to be the better version of it. You're not learning or being better than the person I taught you something. You're not learning shit, you're not prospering. You know, a teacher and a student. And students supposed to become teachers. And that's just simple facts. There's no reason you're absorbing knowledge and you're not sharing it with nobody else. 
because you're not going to always be here. Maybe that, that same information that you have, you pass it on and it'll live on and it'll go on for generations and generations if you would uh, indoctrinate knowledge into your, 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 your peers. So you might, God forbid, a law might call upon you, but you don't know some information that you gave to your friend might live on and he might pass it on. And that shit might live on forever because it's just getting passed on. And that's the way knowledge is supposed to be. Knowledge ain't supposed to be sold. That's why I don't understand why we got to pay for schools and all that type of shit like that. I understand it, but then I don't understand it. I get it, though. You know what I'm saying? And I don't knock the educators that want to get paid for what they do because they deserve a piece of the pie, too. But there's a lot of shit that we shouldn't have to pay for that should just be you know, taught to us and gave it to us for to make the world better, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people despair just come, come from not being financially stable. A lot of heartache and despair comes from not being, don't know when your next dollar come. Now imagine if everybody can figure a way to just stay stable and, and, and pay their bills. It'll be a lot less more violence, a lot of less niggas in jail, a lot. Cause Nine times out of ten, a nigga did something trying to get some money going to jail. Big risk, shit like that. But We just got the Ramadan. I ain't gonna even um climbing at the at the negative shit. This is for the people that wanna come here and learn. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been in here 42 minutes. I'm just dropping jewels. There's 95 people in here. It's only 27 likes. For the 95 people in here, if you didn't hit the like button, can you please hit the like button? That's how the, the videos um get traction and get, you know, and you know, get into people's playlists. I just need y'all to hit the like button. I'm not gonna beg you. I'm not gonna I'm not asking for a cash app. I'm not doing none of that other flavor shit niggas be doing on here. Just hit the like button. It's 28 likes. It's 98 people in here. Can y'all hit the like button? I'm cool with anybody that's cool with me. That's all I need is the likes. It's 32 likes. Can y'all hit the like button? Everybody that's in here, y'all here because y'all fuck with me or y'all even don't. If y'all don't fuck with me, just leave it. If y'all want to keep putting up negative comments, that's okay. I'm not going to pay no mind with it. For the ones that feel like they come to my platform and learn something and I give them juice, just hit the like button. If you really fuck with Uncasa, let me see who fucks with me. Genuinely. I, like, I had promised myself that I wasn't even going to do no more lives, but I changed the narrative on my lives. I'm only talking about uh, positive internet energy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not indulging in none of that, 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 that dirty part of YouTube. I was caught up in the dirty part of YouTube for about a week. That shit didn't feel good because it was just derogatory things being said on both sides. And that shit is whack for people that you got respect for. So I ain't with that. So I'm back to piles. I'm back to over here slinging my piles, motherfucking positive internet energy. And whoever got positive internet energy, come over here and fuck with me. You gonna always learn something. I'm gonna always give you the real. Never gonna give you mad, sad, or depression or bitterness. I'm gonna always give you uplifting jewels. Sometimes a nigga be a little high, so that's why a nigga just be a little low sometimes. But I'm speaking clear, and y'all definitely can understand and comprehend what the fuck I'm saying. 98 people in here, 51 likes. That's not good enough. Let me see at least 70, 80 likes. Come on, why y'all so lazy, B? Come on, black folks. That's one of our biggest downfalls right there. Nigga ain't asking for no money. Just hit the fucking like button. But, you know, 
that's that's more than half that hit the like button. It's 100 people in here, only 51 people hit it. That's more than half. I'm appreciative. Yeah, I'll be looking for beats. DM me at the real unconscious. My, 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 my um, email is beats, B E A T S, the number four, casa at gmail.com. Send me beats. I'm going to keep it real. Don't send me nothing that sound like old heat making shit. Send me that new wave heat. I like boom bap. I like RB beats. Send me heat. Don't send me no bullshit. If you know it's bullshit, don't send it to me. Because I'm going to let you know that is bullshit. But if you got heat, send it to me. I'm working on new projects and I need music. You know what I'm saying? I got a bunch of fucking rhymes. I just need music to go along with it so y'all can get these new tapes. But it's a, been a beat drought because I'm not rhyming off of everything that everybody else. I'm not. I refuse to put out a project that fall in the category of sounding like everybody else. So if y'all got beats, it's 100 people. If y'all got beats, hit me up at beats for casa that's b-e-a-t-s the number four k-a-s-a at gmail.com i repeat beats for casa b-e-a-t-s the number four k-a-s-a at gmail one more time beats b-e-a-t-s the number four so it's Beach Four Casa, B E A T S, the number four, K A S A at gmail dot com. Yeah, bro, you don't think I I know I got bad I I say man like. Like, come on, get off my dick. Like, get the fuck up out of here if you want to come here and say negative. I get disrespectful, but that I just got off of Ramadan. Like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Like, niggas be clowns. Y'all niggas come to niggas' platform to say derogatory shit. Like, I know y'all niggas don't get no pussy, no money, no nothing. Nigga that get pussy and get money and, 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 and doing things, they don't have time to type about another man or how another man look. Or something. If you come here, come get some information. I'm giving information out that's that that's that's informative that you can use in life. If you don't want that, get the fuck off my page and eat a long dick. Like for real. Got that nigga up out of here. Yeah, I'm on Pillmatic too. Yeah, pop. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on Pillmatic too. See, gully, gully controversial, but I know a gully, a side of gully TV that y'all don't know. And that's the side I respect and I fuck with. And it's not because I made a bunch of money with him, because I've did. I've made a bunch of money with him. It's not because of that. It's because of what I learned from him and what he learned from me and the mutual respect I got. Like I said, I can't tell nobody how to conduct they platform. So, I got nothing but love for Gully. He got nothing but love for me. It's a mutual respect. That's where that stands. Like I said, I'm a fan of Gully's platform. Like I said, I don't agree with everything that he say, but we, it's all the entertainment, right? And, like, I, I, I look for the jewels with this stuff, you know what I'm saying? But Gully says shit that a lot of people that have platforms are afraid to say. He's not afraid to say what he want to say, so let that man conduct his business the way he wants to on this page. It's working for him. It's been working for him. He's successful. And just leave it at that, man. We got to stop breaking down black men, man. Yeah, man, these, these other, the other side been doing it to us for so long. Nobody don't say shit about that. You know what I'm saying? Take the good with the bad. That's all I can say. 
I'm finding this. I got some newfound, super positive sh shit with me. So niggas can't really throw me off. But you, you come at me with disrespect, I return it. I'm, I reciprocate it. It's reciprocal. So all you do when people say dumb shit, you just get them out of here. You just, you just, you just get them out of here. But um, yeah, the holy month of Ramadan. I don't got no favorite verse for my rapper. I just enjoy music. Curse you out for what, Canadian knuckles? So, like, don't be up here coming to be a clown. Like, if you want to shout, like, I shout you niggas out. You niggas just like to be clowns, yo. Like, damn, it sucks to be a clown, nigga, yo. 96 people in here, 62 likes. Yo, y'all can do better than that. Come on, if y'all fuck with me, take this shit up to 80 likes. Like, come on, bro. I was going to give y'all out. I, I, an hour of my time. Like, I'm about to shut this shit down because y'all niggas just be up here fucking playing. Shout out to Ash and Sim. Ash is still good. That's my bro. Um, One of my mentors in life. I give him that. And Sin is good. Like, Ash and Sin is good, man. They great. My favorite Motown. See, when you say Motown, I love the whole Motown. I love the Four Tops. I love the Temptations. I love, like, that whole, whatever they played on the Cool The Eyes soundtrack, I love all Motown music. Like, I was grow, I grew up in a soulful house, so Motown, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, the Vandells, Martha and the Vandells. Like, I'm a, I'm a music historian, so I know a lot about music, but, like, who I like, there's nobody who's my favorite from Motown. All of them my favorite. Like, I put all of them, like, when you say Motown, you gotta love it all. Next time I go to the D, I'm gonna visit that. Yeah, you just gotta click the three dots uh, to hit the like button. I don't know why, I don't know why Joel's never signed Malik from draft picks, but Malik was definitely on the Skull game. That's his stepbrother by, uh, that's his brother by adoption. But, um, I don't know why he never, um, but Malik was definitely on the, uh, Skull game mixtape. I listen to a lot of old shit lately. I've been listening to a lot of 90s R&B lately, 90s rap. I listen to all the new shit, but that shit, it, I won't be sounding the same. Salute from Cali, what's going on? Four Corner, what's going on, baby? How I feel about health? Man, every morning I try to get up and take me a nature walk, meaning I, I walk through the park just to get my thoughts together. Sometimes I listen to music, sometimes I don't. You know what I'm saying? I'll take some fruit, banana, apple, mixed fruits, or water, and i walk through the park where they be people walking their dogs and stuff. You gotta, I try to run up the steps on my rocky shit. I walk a lot, so I, got, I get a lot of, you know, 
exercise that way because I, 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 I walk long distances all the time. So I get, I get my walk on. You know what I'm saying? Health is very important. You know what I'm saying? As you get older, you start to feel your body start to feel different. And as I get older, my body start to feel different. I just try to stay, you know, I'm probably the same weight that I was at 17, 18. Probably only a couple of pounds. I lost a lot of weight during this Ramadan, during the fast, but I don't got a pop belly. I don't, I ain't hit that, that fat stage ever. Like, I just... You know, and I don't eat a lot of shit. I don't do a lot of shit. I don't take a lot of... I don't fuck with drugs like that. I'm a weed head. I hardly drink. You know what I'm saying? And I try to balance out my red meat intake, eating uh, steaks and shit like that, and burgers and chicken and fish. I try to balance it out. You know, I slow down on eating snacks and shit. I see my sister lose her leg um, to diabetes, so I try to... You know, live, live a prosperous life with the health, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Big Joe, how your day? My day is good. E Marabic. Asalaamu Alaikum. Ain't nobody. JR definitely never wrote nothing for me, so you can go ahead with that dumb shit. Um, yeah, we walked the whole Miami. We ain't walked to Miami. We walked the whole Miami, meaning we walked the strip. That's what you do when you go to Miami. So if you've never been to Miami on Memorial Day weekend, you walk the strip. Because if you're driving, you're going to be caught in traffic for hours. So you walk the strip. And we went out there with a family van, top-notch joint. We all drove out to Miami. We could have flew. We could have did anything, but we took a road trip. We didn't walk to Miami, but we walked through Miami. Like, ask Gully at the time of his life. And all we had was money on us. Salute from Portsmouth, Virginia. Big A, 2900. What's going on? I got peoples down there in Portsmouth, my home, my, my home girl, Sh 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 um, Sharana. She ride bikes and all that. I don't know if you know, but she from Portsmouth. Shout out to Sharana. Um, like, I got, like, I got people all over the fucking globe. This is what I be telling niggas. And I connect with people. I don't meet people and just, I, I connect. Like, I'm locked in, I'm tapped in. Yeah, fatherhood, yeah. Man, nah, come on, man. Yeah, I want to I wanna say rest in peace to Mr. C, man. Definitely want to say rest in peace to Mr. C, man. Like, man, for the last, since, since, yo, I swear to, I swear, since pandemic, since 2020, when I wake up from a nap and I look at my Instagram or something, I've been seeing people pass away. I've been finding out people passing away through social media for the last couple of years, man. And this sucks, man. It sucks. I remember Mensa C was doing the, the Diplomat intro on the, the Dipset Symphony shit. Like, I got to work with Mr. C, man. I'm, getting this, I'm, I'm watching my childhood die right in front of me, man, from actors. To everybody. Hold on, y'all. Who is it? A little accident. This is what happened.
Hey, Mafia, good. I don't know what's up with this. I hate when the screen go like this, but we've been here in an hour anyway, man. But yeah, I'm about to close out this live. I love y'all. Tune in tomorrow. I'm going to come back. What y'all saying? Peace out.